Hare Krishna. Hey, go over to number one. Well, maybe this is louder. Can you hear me in the back? Yes. No problem? Louder. louder would be good. Do we want Indian standard that there's 50% feedback and the, your teeth shatter? Hare Krishna. I think we're okay. Um, two things before we get started. Did you notice that the outfit on Radhagirit Hari today is all flower petals? And also, this is uh, our Bach de Scott. We have a special effects here. We've got the lightning over Govardhan Hill just to invoke the auspicious mood. Either that or we've got to shorten the building, but I think it's probably... The <laughs> Either way, it's a nice effect. Give me just a minute here to get all the logistics. Today is a, every day in spiritual consciousness, Krishna consciousness, is a festival. At the same time, there's some days that are special festivals. And today is one of those special festivals. It is called Govardhan Puja. Just so we know, we'll end on time. I brought my own clock. Uh, let's put it here. And we'll talk about that. Um, it is a time... You know, you see children playing on the beach and they lose track of time. And they make their little sand castles. They make a little crown out of seaweed. And they have a whole world that they're living in. And then the mother and father says, hey, hey, time to go home. And they gotta wrap up the whole thing. And if the mother and father don't say time to come home, gotta wrap it up, not quite yet. What happens? The tide comes in, and what happens to their castle and kingdom and the whole thing? So we are all awash at the ways of time, and the tide will come in for each and every one of us. So the question is, all right, what did I do with my life? Just like the children are playing, but they can't play all day for the rest of their life. They got to go to school. They got to get an education. And even more importantly, you know, if you guys, can we pretend we're on an Indian bus? I know we're in the age of COVID, but if everybody could just shift a little bit, because it's going to fill up here and everyone's going to be cramped and crowded and have to stand. So just... Uh, it's, it's a wave. Let's do a wave. How will they get over there? Do we tell them to go around and come in the side door? Anyway, it'll work itself out. Or not. So, oh, before I forget, this Sunday morning at 7.45 online, 7.45 online at the temple website, uh, we're going to do a special PowerPoint about Govardhan Hill, the history of Govardhan Hill, its significance. So it'll be a lot of fun. So that's tonight, I'm sorry, that's uh, Sunday at 7.45 a.m. So that's a little commercial for Sunday. Okay, here we go. Uh, ah, we have someone humming along. Namo Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swamini Tanamani Namaste Saraswati Devi Gauravani Pacharani Nirvasesha Sunyavadi Paskacha Disatarani. So, just to set a little, oh, just to set a little um, preface or uh, before we get rolling, um, 
Krishna says, Paritanaya sadhunam vinasaya chadruskitam dharma samstapanartaya sambhavami yuge yuge. And that's from Bhagavad Gita. And Krishna explains why he comes. Just like the governor sometimes goes to the prison house, voluntarily or sometimes involuntarily, but that's another topic. But when they go voluntarily, they can enter as they like and they can leave. They can even pardon people inside. So the prisoner, the, the, sorry, the governor is above the prison house. Similarly, the cause of all causes, Krishna, the Supreme Lord, Aham Sarvasha Prabhaho Mata Sarvam Pavartate Jan Yataha, so many Vedic mantras are there, that the cause of all causes, the source of all things, Krishna, God, he does not come under the material nature. But he can, therefore, just as the governor can go to the prison house, Krishna can come here. And in fact, he says he does. Sambhavami yuge yuge. Again and again and again, Krishna comes. When and why? To establish dharma, the principles of truth. So he comes to establish dharma. And he also comes to curb down the miscreants, those who are causing uh, havoc in the world. And he comes to save the devotees. You have Prahlad and Lord Nishringadev. But, but beyond that, Prabhupada said one time, actually Krishna can take care of those things through so many agents. So why does Krishna, the Supreme Lord, actually come to this world? Does anyone know? If it's not to establish dharma, if it's not to annihilate the miscreants, if it's not to save the devotees, why does Krishna come? Shilo pra- oh. You are a one smart girl. Yeah, very, way to go. She said to give pleasure to the devotees. Hey, way to go. You want to sit here? We want to trade places? <laughs> not bad, actually. Um, Prabhupada said, just to give the devotees something to talk about. It is like a sneak preview. You know, they show the sneak preview and it's meant to incite interest. Or in the old days, Prabhupada gave the example of the, when the circus comes to town. Now, I, I don't know, circuses, they even exist anymore. Yeah. Um, anyway, the circus used to set up outside the town and then they would have a parade that would go down the main street and the kids would see all the you know, all the different, for the elephants and the clowns, and the, the oh, I want to go, I want to go, I want to go, to incite that interest. Thank you very much, Mataji. It's hard for the kids. It's hard for them to sit. So, thank you. <laughs> anyway, everybody gets three shots, and then they got to go. That's two. <laughs> but who's counting? Um... So the circus comes through town, and it's meant to incite our interest. In the same way, Krishna comes to this world to incite our interest, to give us something to talk about. Believe it or not, just like there's a whole world on the other side of this wall. Can anybody see what's going on on the other side of this wall? No, you can't see what's going on. But we know that there's something going on, isn't it? The fact that we can't see it doesn't mean that it's not there, right? So there's a whole kingdom of God. There's a whole spiritual dimension. Just because we can't see it. Let me ask you a question, because we are short for time. Um, anyone here uh, been seen, the, seen the pyramids? Raise your hand if you've seen the pyramids. Okay, we got a few inveterate travelers, but the majority of the people here have not seen the pyramids. Do we have anyone who doubts the existence of the pyramids? We have any conspirators, the, you know, hey, could all be Photoshop, right? You never know. Could be Utah out in the desert and they just dropped the pyramid there and labeled it King Tut. No. Why do we believe that there are uh, why do we believe there's pyramids? Why do we believe in the Eiffel Tower? Anybody here ever seen George Washington? Of course, because we believe in transmigration of the soul, and he might be sitting right next to you in another body. That's another thing. But the principle is, anybody here doubt George Washington or, what is it, 
1492, Columbus sailed the ocean blue. We have any Columbus doubters here amongst us? Why do we believe in the Eiffel Tower or the pyramids or um, whatever it is, Alexander? Those, why do we believe in things that are beyond our sense perception? In the ultimate, it's because we've heard from those we trust. Oh, it's in the New York Times. It must be true. So, Krishna appears in this world. Here's another one. And the description, uh, and, you know, we could shut off that mystical phone for a moment. Bad news will still be there when you turn it back on. Don't worry. It'll still be there. So, Krishna comes, there is a spiritual dimension, a kingdom of God, and Krishna comes sometimes to this world. The word is avatar, means to descend, to come down. So, Krishna comes to this world. And, but it's not that he takes a material body, or he's under the, you know, whatever it is. No. Prabhupada was walking. I was with him. He was walking in Detroit, and there's a park there called Belle Isle, and Prabhupada was, it's in the middle of the Detroit River, and Prabhupada was walking in the park. And he saw at a distance a statue. <clears throat> so Prabhupada asked us, what is that statue? And he turned to, to get a closer look. And as he walked closer, the devotee said, this is Atlas. You know, Atlas, I think is one of the Greek god or Roman god, but Atlas is holding up the earth. And it is heavy lifting. He's got big muscles. He's sweat. Ah, you know. So they said, Prabhupada, this is Atlas holding up the earth. Prabhupada said, we are not interested in that kind of God. The Krishna has to lift weights or he becomes God. Or, no, this is not... Uh, Krishna lifts Govardhan Hill with his left hand. Generally speaking, unless one's left-handed, generally speaking, the left hand is the weaker of the right and the, and, and, and the left. Usually the left arm is weaker, right? And is of the fingers, which is the weakest. A little finger. So Krishna's holding up Govardhan Hill with his left hand little finger. Well, this is wishful thinking and folklore. Hey, if we accept the existence of God as the cause of all causes, let me ask you this. How are all these planets floating? So many planets? Krishna says in the Gita, Sarva Loka Maheshwaram. Uh, what is it? Yeah. Hey, Mataji, come on. Surhadam Sarva Bhutanam. That Krishna is the uh, uh, control, uh, uh, Sarva Loka Maheshwaram, that he is the controller of all the planets. And I don't know, what's the population of the earth? Seven billion, is it now? Seven. Depending on what happened in China last night. So it's something, something like that, seven billion. And how many, pl it's unlimited planets, unlimited universes. And they're all floating in the sky. So if there is a cause of all causes who's floating all the planets in the sky, to lift a planet, that's not such a big deal. It's not unreasonable. So those are some prefaces. Um, the other thing is that one of the, we're going to talk about pride. That's the theme where we're going here. Because the Indra Leela, this pastime, is Lord Indra, one of the devas, one of the demigods, became very proud of his position. We say puffed up. This word, everyone, you know, most of you are cooks or have experienced cooking. You know puris, right? It's flat. You put it in the, in, in the, in the ghee, wok of ghee, hopefully ghee, and what happens? It puffs up. But what happens? After you get a little pin in that, it's all hot air. It's not really, you know. So Srila Prabhupada took this term, puffed up. He liked it very much. They were puffed up with borrowed plumes. So Lord Indra, he sets that example for us. He bec now, you can say demigods. Well, that's a lot, to, you know. That. But let me ask you this. Um, every government, we have a president. Is the president, what's the first thing the president does outside of steal money? Um, what's he do? He sets up a cabinet, isn't it? One of the finest hotels in the world, Claridge's in London. Winston Churchill said, when I die, I don't want to go to heaven. I want to go to Claridge's. I don't think he made it to either one, but that's another story. But, but the point is that they're famous for having three staff for every guest. Therefore, it runs very smoothly. So the, and even in Christian tradition, they have a whole 
a hierarchy of angels. There's cherubs and seraphims and archangels, and they have the, you know, Gabriel does one thing, you know, uh, Peter's doing another. They got a whole system going on. So it's not that, well, uh, you know, Vedic idea, you believe in many gods, and it's just a hodgepodge, and it's, you know, some, you know, no. It makes complete sense. Nothing is more complicated than this universe, this creation. So Krishna has all kinds of agents in charge of different things. That's reasonable. So that's a little preface. So Indra is in charge. He's the, under Lord Brahma, but he's, in, he's sort of the uh, head of the demigods, and he's in charge of it. So I don't want to take the time to sell, s tell the whole story because I think most of you know it. But Indra became... Well, I'm just thinking of the time. Um, if one gets, we were talking about the Puri becoming full of hot air. And it is a disease that all, a mental disease that all of us suffer from. I was thinking earlier, I'm going to speak about pride today. I was thinking, oh, it's a subject I'm well versed in. You know, it's something I can speak about from realization. So, uh, but the tendency to become proud. Krishna says, all things are suspended on me like pearls on a thread. Krishna says, this is all from the Gita, Krishna says, I am the ability in all people. So if we think, just like one time I was giving a class, this is many years ago, hopefully I've advanced a little bit, uh, I was giving a class and I was thinking, oh, by Prabhupada's grace, I'm speaking nicely, and the students are listening, and you know. And when I finished, I got off, off the seat like this, sort of an Oprah moment here. Thank you, Mataji. Bye-bye, my little friend. We'll be done soon. Um, now it's your turn. No, you're cool, don't we? Um, so I was speaking, and thinking I'm speaking very nicely, and I got up off the seat to talk with the students, and I completely collapsed like a puppet, you know, a marionette that the strings had been cut. Both legs had fallen asleep, and I could not even get up. One of the students had to come and help me. It was a humbling moment, and I thought from, wait a minute, I can't even walk. What to speak of? Speak or think. Krishna is in the heart of all, what is it, the Matasmitigyanam Apoanam Kircha? Krishna gives knowledge, remembrance, intelligence. All of that comes from Krishna within the heart. So the fact of the matter is, Prabhupada one time said, I'm speaking to you by the mercy of God, and you are hearing me by the mercy of God. And when we forget that, that pride comes to a lot, and we get puffed up over so many things. We get popped up over a little car. It, we can do something wrong. Like Sishupal was defeated, what is it, 16 times by Krishna in the, ba in, in the Bhagavatam? 17 times Krishna didn't even give him the time of day and left. And he thought, oh, just see how victorious I am. I mean, we can do something wrong 20 times in a row and we get it right once and we think, just see how expert I am. So this, um, this the problem with pride one of the problems with pride is the way we think that we are independent of the mercy of the Supreme Lord. And it also, Krishna describes, from attachment comes, anyway, I'll make it short. Um, when we become proud, what is the saying, pride goes before a fall? When we become proud, we become arrogant. It's a natural thing. And we also treat people roughly. Unless Krishna describes in Bhagavad Gita that he gives a list of all the different qualities of knowledge. And one of the first, the, not one of the first, the first quality, the key that op opens the door to knowledge or wisdom. You know, knowledge, we're talking about actual understanding of life and who we are. We're not talking about, you know, random facts and figures. The key to wisdom or knowledge, Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, the precursor, precursor 
is humility. Without humility, one cannot actually hear and one cannot actually learn. I know everything. Who are you to tell me? So we have this example of Krishna is very kind. We hear that. And we know that Govardhan Leela, I was reading by uh, Srila Vishen Chakravati Thakur, one of our great teachers, his commentaries on this Govardhan Leela. And he describes there that we know that Krishna lifts Govardhan, Indra, sa- Indra gets, Krishna stops Indra's sacrifice. No, no, you don't need to do that. You just worship Govardhan Hill. Actually, Krishna speaks as a first-class materialist. And Nanda Maharaj, the residents of Braj, this is their mood. All right, Krishna. Some city Hari Toshanam Bhagavatam says, hey, whatever Krishna wants, we'll just do it. You know, all right, you got an argument. You don't got it. Krishna wants it. And that's the perfection of Dharma. Let me just please the Supreme Lord of our occupational duty. People ask, oh, Bhagavad Gita, do your duty. Everyone, you ask it, what is it? Oh, it means do your duty. But what is that duty? What is the highest duty? We have so many duties. And Bhagavatam, which is the proper perp- uh, commentary on Vedanta Sutra or the Vedas, it says, Samsidhi Haritoshanam. The measure of every activity is how is Krishna, how is the Supreme pleased? So, um, we know, so just to reduce Indra's pride, we'll get back to pride in a moment. Uh, the ceremony for worshiping Indra was stopped. Indra, outraged that this someone could dare to uh, challenge his position, he sent the huge storms, clouds, oh, some lightning, maybe it was on fuse. Um, and then Krishna lifts Govardhan Hill with his little finger left hand as his pastime umbrella, and everyone goes under it. So we know that it's an example of how Krishna saves his devotees. But Vishen Chakravarti Thakur, this great saint who also comments on this, says that Indra was also a devotee. He's also a devotee. But because of this pride, he couldn't, s- you know what they say, blind rage? You've heard this you know, in America? They say blind rage, passion killing. People just lose their temper, lose anger due to pride, and, you know, and just do something crazy. So we're all in. So Lord Indra was a devotee, and Krishna performed this pastime just to reduce Lord Indra's pride. So we should understand the common idea of God is that God is an order supplier. Order supplier means like Amazon. I offer a prayer, and God answers, you know? And it better be 24-hour delivery. You know what it's? God Prime, Amazon Prime. It's got to be 24-hour delivery, you know? We offer our prayer. And, and you think about it, and I'm not criticizing it. We find it in every tradition, so I'll take a, you know, a whack at Hinduism. Um, uh, what is it? Om Jaya Jagadish Hari? Give me a new car and a house by the sea. So they're praying for something. The Christians are asking, praying for daily bread. My guru said, that's not love of God, it's love of bread. <laughs> and, and you've got you know, the, the Buddhists, Tibetan Buddhists, that, you, know, that you, you offer a prayer on a piece of paper and you throw it into the fire so the ashes go up, so it, like there's some proximity thing. You know, if, if I offer a prayer on top of a mountain, maybe I get a better signal and God will hear me. He's in our heart. He hears everything we have to say. He already knows. Before we know, he knows. Ah, we have a circus going outside. In or out, my friends? Oh, it's in. Do you have a chair for her? Some gentleman should jump up. Yeah, very good. Give her your chair. Thank you very much. Not the G. So, <laughs> we got a lot going on today. Um, shut the door. All right. It's a parade. And get Mataji up a chair, too. Mrs. Duvari has been here uh, before I came here, before Parashai. She's the longest serving devotee of Radhagiri Hari. Something amazing. She's standing right there. So get her a chair. Yeah, something amazing. Anyway, let's say this. Um, We expect God 
to answer our prayers, our materialistic prayers. And if he doesn't answer our prayers, then there's no God. It should be like, you know, here's A and then B equals C. I offer a prayer, God delivers. If he doesn't deliver, he must not be there. But let me ask you this. Just like Indra, a Krishna's, Indra was a devotee, but he was blinded by pride. And therefore, Krishna had to intercede. Krishna did a surgical operation on his heart to remove his anartas. So, if I offer a prayer and God does not answer, does that mean there's no God? What is the ultimate? I'll give you a simple example. Suppose I visit a temple, and as I'm leaving, I give, uh, let's say who, I give uh, Govardhan Prabhu, I give Govardhan uh, $50. Say, hey, save it for going to India or buy yourself some books or this or that, you know? So when he gets back to the ashram, he says, hey, you know, this Bhadrarayan Swam, he's not so bad. He gave me $50. And he's feeling very happy. I mean, Govardhan says, I'm picking him because he's not at all thinking like this. But, but when he gets back to the ashram and he reports his $50, and everyone says, gee, that's funny. He gave all of us $100. How does all of a sudden Govardhan feel materially? Hey, 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 wait, uh, Swami, come back here. Where's my 50 bucks, you know? So that which was appeared to be something good was insignificant. You know, we're talking on you know, a relative scale. So in a similar fashion, we're praying to God for so many things. Give me this, give me that, relieve this, relieve that. But if the actual, what is the actual purpose? If I want to draw a straight line from point A to point B, freehand, what's the best way to do that? <laughs> yeah, it's sort of an open-ended question. Sorry about that. If I'm going from point A to point B, free, straight line, obviously. That's basic geometry. But I, look, I don't watch as I'm drawing the line. I will waver. I look at where I'm going. They, do, they tell you that in drafting. You look, where you look at the, and then you're much more likely to draw a straight line. So what is the goal of life, as I was saying in the beginning? Why are we all here? Shouldn't we ask that question? And what is the goal of the whole thing? I was at a funeral the other day. It's part of my job as a priest. And uh, in the middle of the, there was a eulogy. Everyone's all, and it's, it's a nice ceremony. They're respecting the person. I'm not deprecating or diminishing the ceremony. Don't get me wrong. However, Everyone was saying that this gentleman, he was always on call. You could call him 1 o'clock in the morning, he'd answer his call. He'd answer your call. You could get thrown in jail in Swaziland and allowed one international call. You call him because he will come. So it went on and on like that three or four times. Next person was coming up and we heard a bring, 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 bring. Bring, bring, bring. Everybody looked, their cell phone shut, everybody shut the Turns out the guy was in a suit, you know, they, before they went to the cremation, they had him in his best suit. His phone was in his pocket. I had to reach in and shut off the phone. It was sort of an awkward moment. But as I sat down, the devotee I was with said to me, well, he's out of range now. He, that's one call he's not picking up. So we're all going to be out of range at some time, and we've got to leave like those children playing on the beach. We're going to have to leave everything behind. I'm sorry, but it, it's true of me. It's tr and Krishna is very kind. He gives us signals. You know? <laughs> Look at me. You get a cane. You get gray hair. Your hearing goes. You got so many, you know? So there, old age is a sign. Hey, hey, wake up. You're coming to the end of the line here. So the point I'm trying to make is that one of the th we're going to end with a few sweet leelas because it is a very sweet pastime. But to take the focus on Indra, what was the cause? The cause of the problem was his pride. And Krishna took care of protecting the devotees, but he also protected Indra by reducing that pride.
And we should understand, Krishna's, Prabhupada says in a great sense, he says, the, the benevolent therapeutic hand of the Lord acting as a curative force. I'll say it one more time. The uh, benevolent therapeutic hand of the Lord acting as a curative force. That Krishna's real mission, we got him everywhere. Krishna, <laughs> do we have a play tonight? No, just acting out now. Okay, um, no problem. The, the real thing that's blocking us from experiencing the presence of Krishna everywhere, the real thing that's keeping us in this material world, birth after birth after birth, is all of our material desires, all of our material conceptions, all of our pride, I'm black, I'm white, I'm brown, I'm rich, I'm poor, the, I want this, I need that, the two functions of the mind, hankering and lamenting, Oh, if only I got, if only I got. And then when you got it, you're completely in anxiety. You're going to lose it. And then when it's a loss, oh, I used to have. It's the cycle the mind is going through again and again and again. So to get relief from all of that, and at the time of death to have a pure heart and leave this world and go back to the eternal permanent kingdom of God, Krishna works on our heart. Just as he worked on Lord Indra, he also works on our heart. So when things happen to us, we cannot control conditions. I'm not saying walk out the street and just as a quick one, uh, you know, we just don't do anything. No, we do our duty to the best of our ability. But things happen. We do not control conditions. But what can we control? We can't control COVID. Who expected that? Where did that come from? So we can't control conditions. But what can we control? Hmm? Our, con our reactions. We can control our consciousness. When something happens, you know, <laughs> one of the devotees asked Prabhupada, well, if we're just depending on Krishna, well, then why do we wear seatbelts? You know, stump the Swami question. Prophets and devotees are fearless, but they're not fools. So, you know, we do what we can. But in the ultimate issue, we should try to see what is Krishna doing here? Why is this happening? How is Krishna trying to purify my heart? What is the lesson to be learned here? And if we approach life like that, first off, it becomes so much free from anxiety and fear and lust and greed and envy, all those things that cause us distress. It becomes free from that. And also, we learn the lessons. Ah, one last thing. Vishen Chakravarti Thakur says that, okay, after the Indra Leela, after Krishna puts the hill back down, another cosmic ring. Don't worry about it. Okay. Um, after Krishna puts the hill back down, all right, saving his devotees was resolved. No problem. But Indra was thinking, okay, Krishna took care of his, the residents of Braj. What's going to happen to me? I mean, Indra really was a nasty guy, what he tried to do. So he was waiting to get whacked. He was thinking, you know, as Yamaraj, I'm going to be hauled off to the, the planet of death. And, you know, where, what am I going to be in my next life from Indra to Indra Gopa? Indra Gopa is a name for, a, you know, smallest insect. So from Indra to Indra Gopa, what's going to happen to me? Anyone know what happened? Lord Indra offered prayers. He approached Krishna, and, his, and if you read those prayers, they're beautiful in the Srimad Bhagavatam. And he's saying, I now realize my position. I now realize that what I was chasing after was foolish. I now realize the air, what, puffed up over borrowed plumes. He offers these beautiful prayers, and Krishna forgives him. There's no reaction. Because the whole point is to learn the lesson. If we learn the lesson, Krishna's not vindictive. But if we learn, our, if, if we tune in to learning our lesson, why is this happening? What is the lesson? Then that's the solution. Krishna doesn't 
there's not an arbitrary karmic reaction. You know, you owe ten dollars, you're going to have to pay ten dollars. It doesn't work like that. The whole education, the Latin root of the word education, means to draw from darkness into light, to draw forth, to pull out, as from darkness into light. So in this Indralila, Lord in, uh, Krishna saved the residents of Braja, but he also saved Lord Indra. And I said one last thing, but I'll say one last thing again. Before in yeah, thank you, you might the best thing is just shut the door. Here's a novel concept. Um and then another one opens, such as life. <laughs> Let it be a lesson to you folks. <laughs> and to me. Um Indra, the way he found the way forward, how do I get out of this mess I've made? He first was instructed by Lord Brahma. He went to Mount Meru. And Lord Brahma told him, look, here's what you do. You go with Sarabi. And Sarabi the, the, the also gave him good advice. So this combination of hearing the humility of willing to learn and hearing from a devotee, someone who knows Krishna, and following their advice, one becomes freed from anartas. So we're going to end uh, that's enough on pride. Just a few sweet leelas and we'll be done. Um, when Indra was first rallying the troops to attract to at attack Vrindavan, he called Krishna a foolish and talkative young boy. He said the residents of Vrindavan are listening to this foolish, talkative boy. Now, if you know a little of the Bhagavatam or Krishna Leela, there's this section, the Sishupal. He offers all those curses against Krishna. And the Acharyas, they take each one of those, uh, what is a 100 or 99? I think 99 and 100 was the last straw. But each of those inverted into a praise. So foolish, talkative young boy. Uh, Vishen Chakravati Thakur says that Mother Saraswati, the goddess of learning, if you look at the Sanskrit, juggled the tongue of Lord Indra. And talkative means anyone who speaks according to the Vedic conclusions becomes learned. Hello, my little friend. No, I'm almost done, I promise. You're in the home stretch. <laughs> he doesn't believe me. Um, so that's talkative. Um, uh, even a fool, even a fool becomes learned by quoting the Vedas. And young boy means that Krishna is all attractive Shama Sundar. So he juggled the words like that. Um, it's also said that um, one could ask why it's pouring rain. Okay, Krishna's got the, the, the inhabitants are under the hill, right? Well, the rain's going to come over the edges, isn't it? It's going to come over the edges. What to do? Actually, Krishna's Sudhasan Chakra was above the hill, evaporating all of Lord Indra's rain. Okay, but it rained all over, Braj. It's going to come in from the sides. No, Anantasesha was there, and Anantasesha coiled around where all the habits, and it was, it was like a dike that held back the water. Um, it said that um, the mountains and lightning are perennial enemies. You know, a mountain struck by lightning, it's just turned to powder. So mountains and, and lightning, yeah, I never thought of this before, are perennial enemies. And usually lightning wins. So Lord Indra was throwing all of his thunderbolts at Govardhan, but they had no effect. So by use, devotees are victorious by Krishna's mercy. Even in the greatest difficulties, devotees are victorious by Krishna's mercy, just as Govardhan was victorious. And one last thing, and we will end here, uh, and we're not so bad because we started late. The, um, when Krishna was holding Govardhan Hill, all the cowherd men and the uh, Nanda Maharaj, and they were also thinking, oh, Krishna needs some help, right? So you see the picture, they're also hoping, helping. So when the Lord Indra realized his defeat, he couldn't even move his arm. He tried to throw a thunderbolt. His arm was frozen in place. So he gave up. 
And he went away and like that was thinking, oh, geez, I made a big mistake here. But when he went away, the sun came out. So Krishna told the inhabitants of Vrindavan, you can leave now. You know, you go out from under the hill. I want to put the hill back down. So the gopas, the little cowherd boys, they said, no, no, Krishna, you leave because we're actually holding the hill. You step out of the way and we'll put it down. So Krishna said, okay. And he gave them just the taste. He gave them a little taste of what it feels like, the weight of the hill, knocked them all flat on their back and unconscious. So they said, no, 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 Krishna, you take care of it. So they all went out and Krishna put the hill down. So the gopas were praising Krishna for his wonderful pastime. But they, there was one fault. The gopas raised one fault. You should have given us more warning that you were going to put the hill down and let us feel the weight. So the summation is that Krishna is simply waiting to give us his mercy. And that mercy is cleansing our heart. And then we can experience Krishna everywhere. So we should be open to it. And that Krishna is merciful to everyone. There's hope for all of us. Even we commit offenses, even whatever. As there was hope for Indra, there's hope for all of us. So we can in there. Thank you for sitting so patiently. And where's our Balaram to tell us what happens next? Thank you, Prabhu. Hare Krishna. So if everybody could please, thank you very much, Bhajanayan Swami. So if everybody could please uh, rise. Um,